Fire and Rescue Department units respond to calls involving traumatic injuries each day, often requiring the need to perform spinal immobilization. These calls range from high-speed motorcycle accidents to falls from standing positions. Regardless of the type and mechanism of injury, immobilization decisions are ultimately at the provider's discretion using good clinical judgment, a thorough physical exam following FRD protocol, all while maintaining a high index of suspicion. Almost daily, units arrive and find their trauma patient walking around the scene, and while this should always be documented in the patient care report, it should not be a factor in determining if the patient is fully immobilized. Some studies suggest that almost 20% of patients who require surgical repair of unstable spinal injuries were found walking around at the scene by EMS personnel. Each engine, truck, rescue, and transport unit are equipped to perform spinal immobilization. During each morning check, personnel should ensure that their equipment is present, clean, and ready for service. The equipment needed to perform spinal immobilization is cervical collar, long spinal board, spider straps, towel rolls with tape, and blankets to pad voids, especially in the pediatric and elderly patient populations. When it has been determined that spinal immobilization should be performed, one member must perform manual stabilization of the patient's cervical spine, size the cervical collar per the included instructions, and apply it so the Velcro strap is aligned properly. Use towels, blankets, or other methods if a collar cannot be properly fitted. Prior to moving the patient, personnel must assess the patient's neurological function to include their pulse, movement, and sensation. Patients should always be moved onto the long spinal board via the log roll or standing takedown. Unless their injuries justify urgent removal, the patient and providers are in imminent danger, or immediate patient access is required. When the patient is found in the prone position, check their back, buttocks, and legs for injuries, and log roll them onto the long spinal board. Personnel holding manual stabilization of the prone patient's cervical spine should initially place their hands to allow for unobstructed rolling of the patient onto the long spinal board. Once the patient is rolled onto the long spinal board, they might need to be centered on the device using synchronized movements along the long axis of the board, ensuring their spinal cord remains in line and the top of their shoulders are at the lower strap connection or handhold of the board. This is accomplished by moving the patient in an up and down coordinated fashion not side to side. The spider straps are the preferred body securing device in Fairfax County. During morning check, ensure that the strap's ears are not rolled down the long center strap as it takes additional time to unroll them on scene. Rather, grab all the ears on each side, fold them in half, and secure with the Velcro strap to ensure they're quickly accessible when needed. Place the sewn V of the shoulder straps on the patient's sternum. This is critical because if the V is not positioned properly on the sternum, the chest and shoulder straps will not be properly secured. Thread the shoulder straps over the shoulder, down through the hole on the board, and then back up through the next higher hole. Do not simply secure the strap around the outside of the board, as a sudden stop or breaking of the transport unit could cause the patient to slide forward, causing additional injuries. The chest strap should be positioned high near the axilla. The hip strap should rest on the pelvis, not the abdomen. Next, secure the thigh strap. Lastly, Thread the lowest strap through the lowest hole possible to tightly secure the spider strap system against forward movement. Large patients will use different holes than an average size adult patient. Continue holding manual stabilization of the patient's cervical spine while placing the towel rolls or other commercial head restraint device in place. As with any spinal immobilization equipment, the torso must be fully secured before the head. 
Secure the head last using EMS tape. However, do not fold or crease the tape as done in practice during EMT school as the patient's head is not fully secured if not taped down. Finally, reassess the patient's neurological function after mobilization is complete. To properly secure the backboarded patient to the cot, place the cot's leg strap through the handholes on the backboard to prevent the backboard from sliding forward due to hard braking inside the transport unit. The cot's chest strap can be secured over the chest as usual. You are now ready for transport.